Are you going to say your the same joke you've said the last two weeks again about pressing We record? are live <laughs> from something, something New South Wales. <laughs> from, yeah. from, a, from a suburb that's not so happy. N- not so happy. Well, that's, that's- You said it has an ice problem. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, we're from the hood, bro. Yeah, from the hood. Uh, um, yeah. Welcome back to Two's Company, Three's a podcast. This mm. is a podcast where we talk about movies and gaming and comic stuff and yes. superhero stuff and sometimes not that mm. stuff. And Twice a week. Twice a week. Twice now. a week, either Tuesdays and Thursdays or Wednesdays and Fridays. You're welcome, planet earth <laughs> <laughs> i was about to say you're welcome america but no, then, hold on a minute that just reminded me of ron burgundy yeah good, uh, good, um what does he say oh, i can't remember <laughs> good evening planet <laughs> earth or some shit you're up man <laughs> oh great just, start I'm, I'm all just right gearing up. let's do this here we go it's our pearl anniversary and we're about to call greece internationally because it's time for tctp how many days of night <laughs> Boy's best friend is his mother. It chapter one. No, a boy's fr- best friend is his mother. I, I just went straight to Eddie then from it Hitchcock. chapter one. Hitchcock. Mm-hmm. Psycho, nineteen sixty, man, dude. Now that's a throwback. Yeah, it is. And I don't think I've seen the mm-hmm. whole thing, or if I have, it's been a very long time since. Really? But you know what? I haven't seen. What haven't you seen? American Psycho, Christian Bale. Really? No, I haven't. Oh, I've seen man, memes that is about incredibly it. Incredibly disappointing. Yeah, honestly, man, American Psycho, Christian Bale. That is like, oh, I feel like it's underrated. I feel like underrated. It didn't, it, well, it didn't get the cult status that I think it deserves. Like that same year, Fight Club came out. Yeah, and that has that cult status. Well, I think just like Fight Club, just like Fight Club, which we'll talk about in the moment. You know, like it, it yes. definitely has that cult following now because it's everywhere and it's popular and people are posting memes about it all across the internet all day fucking every day exactly that's why it's my favorite movie of all time bro maybe what american psycho no fight club that's what i'm saying i'm talking about fight club i see the meme about it no that's all the time that's why i keep reminding myself i really should one day watch this yeah and i'm starting to build a bank of movies that i haven't seen not just recent ones we've yeah we've discussed this multiple times i'm talking about the banks i'm talking about yeah Mm. i'm talking about the movies that are offensive to some people that i haven't that's right yeah for example, Scarface. Really? I haven't seen- What is- Honestly, say hello to my little friend was going to be my quote that- Like in that spot, but I replaced it with Psycho. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Would you have gotten that? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, I know the quote. Yeah. I just haven't seen really? the film. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fantastic. I love seeing Pacino when he's that young. Well, I, look, yeah. that's I, think. I don't think I have seen a young Pacino movie off the really? top of my head. Okay. I may have, but- No, that's fair. Scarface- yeah. I haven't mm. seen it. And yeah. I apologize to everybody out there who fucking just stopped listening just then. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Who just got greatly offended. Yeah. Anyway, no. welcome back to Two's Company, Three's a podcast. My name is Dylan, as always, along with my co-host. Mitchell. And we are a podcast about pop culture. Yes. Twice a week. Twice a week. Yeah. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Check us out. Yeah. Available on mm. Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. YouTube. Big, Big Summer, summer Blowout. blowout. What mm. have we got this week, Mitchell? Anyway. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of big dicks, we want to move on to the first thing. Now, hot off the press, yes. Star Wars. Yes, the new trailer has dropped for the ninth and final, final. Star- yeah, final, final episode of this story arc. Yeah. Now, I feel like this is much more your forte than mine because- You I, haven't caught I, up with it at all. I haven't seen episode seven or eight. Listen, you're not missing out on much when, yeah. when you say you haven't seen number eight because yep. I'm along with the vast amount of humans who fucking mm. hated that movie for a lot of reasons. And I'm not going to get into it because I okay. could for a very long time. Yes. Episode seven was good, but there is a clip in the movie Jay and Silent Bob reboot, which is coming out very soon yeah. globally. Mm. But there's a scene that was released on Facebook as like a 30 second clip where they talk about Star Wars The Force Awakens essentially not as a sequel, but it's technically technically a reboot oh really yeah to have, what? have you seen it no you haven't Wait, seen are it? you talking about um, episode seven no i told you i haven't seen yeah seven that's or what eight. i mean yeah it's the same it's basically the same story as like star wars a new hope there's a okay. new death star and fucking run anyway yeah this episode nine yeah the rise of skywalker jj mm-hmm. abrams is coming back to write and direct he did episode seven force awakens i didn't think he did eight no, he didn't. This yeah, was Ryan okay. Johnson. This is the guy who does Knives Out and the oh. other movie that we talked about a lot. Oh. Yeah. And so, he fucked up. Uh, Looper, that's it. So, yeah. he's done some great films. Yeah. But I 
<laughs> Listen, all right. I will say one thing. <laughs> okay. In terms of story, mm-hmm. it it just wasn't a good story okay. at all. Yeah. It was too condensed. It didn't seem epic. It didn't anyway. Okay. But this new one, the yeah. trailer is teasing that it's wrapping up the entire yes. Star Wars saga. That, that, that's the big takeaway from the trailer that I got, and we'll discuss it this Friday. In, yeah. In TCTP, um, a trailer park. A trailer uh, park. Yeah. And it, yeah, it definitely had that like that's it vibe. Yeah. But remember, we've discussed previously on the podcast that Disney's booked in every second Christmas oh, for a new yeah. Star Wars film. So, this isn't the end end, but the end of this. Yeah. But I don't know how I those new it- ones are going to go bringing in completely new characters from scratch. Well, that's the thing. This is supposed to- This is apparently supposed to wrap up the Skywalker sa- yeah. saga. So, yeah. it's not just the last three. It's the Ooh. entire nine movies, mm-hmm. which- had already been wrapped up with episode six. That's right. I mean, but that if they know. never touched Star Wars again and, try- and made any more, nobody would complain. Nobody would because have noticed. Nobody would have cared. Exactly. Yeah, because like they were great as they are. You know. That's right. Say exactly. what you want about the prequels. You know, like we've no, got th- some love for them. But no, that's right. I've got a little bit. Of, I've got a little bit of love for um, Revenge of the Sith. That movie Fuck, is yeah. fucking like awesome. Yeah. And I've got a very sentimental reason behind that as well. But I mean, if they never touch Star Wars after four, five, and six, yeah, uh, New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi, yeah, nobody would complain. No, because they are a. Bu- that's a beautiful fucking trilogy. Yeah, like, that's and it right. was wrapped up perfectly. Didn't need to touch it. But since they have. All right, wrap it up. All right, yeah. Wrap it up until Christmas in two years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But not only that, they're going to bring out more side stories. So, it's obviously- They're not- yeah. I don't think the There's plan been, is uh, to two, really- is there, Has there? Solo and something else? Was they're there? not technically- Well, they're not- Well, what I was, what I was about to get to oh, is sorry. that I don't think the next- Next mm. slay of fucking Star Wars movies are yeah. going to be like, well, this what this is what happens afterwards. Mm. You know, they may be side stories from what happened during this particular yeah, period okay. in time in yep. this universe. Yep. Uh, Rogue One tells the story of how they catch- <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Rogue oh. One is like the first standalone Star Wars movie outside of the actual. That's so distracting, but so delicious at the same time. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. Do you want more, man? No, I've got my. Scotch yeah, right here. Scotch. yeah, and the Scotch rocks. Scotch marks. Yeah, Scotch rocks. Yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, no, Rogue One was good. I'm not going to get into why, but it was good. I feel it was a very good movie. Uh, yes. Solo, uh, I avoided it for a while. You're right there, man. Mm-hmm. You're having a shocker. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> I think it's great viewing. Um, Check yeah. out the YouTube page. YouTube. Make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Absolutely. Um, what was I saying? Fuck it hell. Anyway, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah Star Wars, the new trailer's out. Yeah. They're, I mean, claiming, they're claiming they're going to wrap it up, but- I mean, the trailer did look pretty epic. Listen, the trailer is epic, and I think the movie will be good and epic as on scale, which I hope it is. That's my problem with episode eight, yeah. is that the scale of the story was way too small for a Star Wars main entry. Yes, yes. Um, yep. You know, and obviously, I do have a lot of love for J.J. Abrams, things that he's yes. directly involved in. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. he's produced things which are subpar, like he produced- um, the Cloverfield Paradox, which is yeah, the third Cloverfield know, yeah. movie, that movie I, I, sucked I, I, huge balls. Man, I don't know why he did that. Honestly, that was a that was a product. A- he produced it. He, I don't think he had well, anything really to do well, with it other than the fact that maybe he had Did he produce it or was his production company attached to it? I can't because, remember exactly. Yeah, no, I think if, it was more like- oh, If it was pre- his company attached to it, it, they're just using his name because he owns that company. I honestly know? think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, that would have to be it, you know? Yeah. But anyway, moving on from that, um, Joker this week. Yeah. The box office is still killing it at the box office. Yep. Rightly so, of yeah. course. Despite everybody saying this movie's dangerous and they were worried about it, no, no everybody like the world's calmed down about I, the Joker I, I, now. I was, gonna, I, think. I was gonna say my favorite thing about something like this is the fact that there's all this hype behind it, all this controversy, <laughs> con- pop, <laughs> <laughs> all this controversy building up to it, and that it comes out. There's still that controversy. By the time that first weekend had stopped, yep. like uh, nobody cared. No, it's there fucking movie. Been, yeah. There hasn't been a single news article about it since. Like, as in the biggest controversy was them using Gary Glitter's Rock and Roll Part 2 yeah. in the scene down the stairs. Because mm-hmm. everyone's like, you're going to give that pedophile fucking money. Uh, he's it's not a fucking get- song. He's yeah. not getting money. No. He's not getting paid. He's in fucking prison. Fuck Gary Glitter. Like, you know, yeah. you're a piece of, sh- piece of shit. There are a lot of pieces of shit in the music industry, no, believe that- it or not. Just it- like there is in exactly, Hollywood. Exactly, that's you know? right. So- and, and let's put aside the fact that he's a pedophile. That song perfectly fit that. Scene, yeah, that scene's going to go down in history. One of the most iconic pop culture things of this, and not as a song creation no. by a pedophile, no. whoever it is. It's no. going to be as, as a great Joaquin scene. Phoenix as the Joker accepting himself. Like that's what it's going down as. That's nobody's, right. nobody's going to see that scene and go, oh, pedophiles. Yeah, like really, 
Yeah. But anyway, um, so it's killing it at the box office at the moment. I had the numbers before. Did you take note of what I said before? Nope. I deleted no, what fine. I had written down because they were wrong. But No, that's you know- fine. But the international gross as of, I think, earlier today was $741.3 million. Yeah. Which is heading towards, if I'm not mistaken, the highest R-rated one uh, film. Yeah. One of? Or- one of. Yep. Now, so the, the speculation in the news article saying that it's it's- in the running to being one of the highest. Yes. Now, we know, I think it was It Chapter 1 or It Chapter 2, mm. one of them was the highest grossing horror film. Yes, that's But I right. believe Deadpool was Dead- the highest grossing R-rated w- film, was regardless the of still, genre. Was The Hangover still in that conversation? Because I remember when The Hangover came out and that became- Yes. The highest grossing R-rated film of yes. all time. Domestically, still in America, according to Box Office Mojo, yeah. Passion of the Christ is still oh, up there really? in number okay. one. I, I, I completely believe that. Yeah, and okay. Joker is still sitting behind Hangover Part 1 and 2 consecutively. Oh, okay. Um, but as we looked at, like, the, because I don't really care about the American domestic or the Australian domestic, I want to know no, global numbers. That's what I'm concerned about as well. Yeah. Oh. So, if we are correct in saying that, jo- uh, not Joker, sorry, Deadpool is number one and this is creeping up to possibly beating that. Yeah. That really goes to show a testament to that kind of filmmaking and freedom of filmmaking. Like we've talked a million, a million times on this podcast yes. before when producers and, and you know, directors and story writers are given more free reign to be, to be creative. Yes. Like Deadpool, for example, it was more like, hey, we've pumped out all of these X-Men stock standard kind of story yeah. films and Marvel's doing the same right now. But if we give a chance on- you know, Ryan Reynolds and his team to make the movie that they mm-hmm. wanted to make. The same happened with Logan. And then it happened with Joker where yes. Todd Phillips wanted to write a story a very particular fucking way. Yep. And they gave him a chance and it's crushing it. Yeah. Like, oh, what does that say? 100%. Like, yeah. For, for such a long time, Hollywood was afraid to make big budget R-rated movies. Exactly. For the, for the, for the fear that people won't go see these because no, they're R-rated. That's right. Listen, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Robocop was R-rated and they made it ch- like children's yeah. toys and an animated series off that. That's right. Exactly. You know, like As R-rated a- films are successful. It, Don't it, worry it's, about It's good that. to see these yeah. big production companies finally accepting the fact that, yes, children are the money. Like, mm-hmm. let's be honest. There's a reason Disney literally fucking runs the world. But yeah. there's there enough- is still enough of a market of the over 18s or I believe R in America is 17s and over. Yeah. Yeah. There is still more than enough of a market there to make your money back and some more. And during well, um, that uh, long-winded speech that you just had, yep. <laughs> um, I, 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 did the, I did the digging and I have the list here of the Excellent. highest R-rated films. Yep. So, number one is currently Deadpool 2 with $780, oh, right. $785 Shit, okay. million. Dollars. Number two, Deadpool 1, ah. $783 million. So, that franchise is Number three, it. The yeah. Matrix Reloaded. Oh, okay. 742 <laughs> And number four is Joker seven hundred and forty one. Number four. So it's no, only four, it's only forty four million behind Deadpool two, and I guarantee it's going to get it, man. Fucking hell! All this right. is going to be an easier chase than Avengers Endgame doing their fucking extended re releases and that. Just yeah. a sidebar as well. I did see an article during the re- week that Todd Phillips has said he's not releasing any extended edition or extended cuts or deleted yep, scenes. None of that. I respect that. I hate that. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I want as much as I can of this character in this story. Do you feel and that- And to know that there's stuff that's cu- on the cutting room floor that's never going to see the light of day. Yeah. Ugh. Do you feel that that is a deliberate sort of- uh, <laughs> Stab at Avengers? No, not necessarily Avengers, okay. but a deliberate stab at films and releases in general, and also a bit of a wank into his own, like, well, my movie is perfect, and this is all you're getting. You know, this was purely oh, I, intended I, for the like, way it is. He fully deserves it, but it would not surprise me at all if this was a smidge of an ego trip where he's like, man, I made the perfect film. I, I think know so what I filmed, and you're not going to see it. Yeah, but I it's think it's a lot of I, I don't think it's a stab at Avengers, because there was never going to be a Joker re-release at the end of its run. No. They're not chasing that fucking- like that box office ranking, you know? No, like, that's correct. They're going to get it. They're going to get yeah. it easily. But at the same time, man, that just like breaks my heart that there is probably upwards of, I'd say, 15 to 20 minutes of footage from this film yeah. of Joaquin Phoenix that in this Oscar-winning role. Yeah. 
um, that we're never going to get to see, even on the Blu-rays, because I would go out yeah. and buy the special Blu-ray edition for forty-five dollars. I it- buy Blu-rays mm. mainly yes. not only to have like the best sort of viewing experience at home of the movies that I love, but also because mm. of the special features. I love. That's right. I always watch special features if I've got time after a movie. As we've you know, discussed many a time, um, when I was working at the video store, fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I had so much time to myself in that, and I explored every special feature I could out of everything. I watched That's alternate so cool. endings deleted scenes like i was a very lonely 16 year old <laughs> okay i'm just saying but that's where this came from that's where my love came from so yeah hey, absolutely you know? but speaking of like you know uh box office yes numbers and mm. it's just increasing 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 just to go back to star wars for a yes. second many 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 episodes ago we talked about how you know avengers endgame will take the top spot of yes. the highest grossing film of did. all time which mm-hmm. it did respectively mm-hmm. of course and then we argued that maybe avatar may take that again avatar 2 will take it what about Star Wars? The, pre- the ticket pre-sales Ooh. released only this week have crushed Endgame's records. That's insane. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I never thought of that, honestly, because I'm out of that Star Wars loop. Like I just- Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, like I now just we look at this from a different perspective. Yeah. Like I just said earlier, I haven't seen seven or eight. So, I, I hadn't thought about number nine wrapping the whole show up. Mm. The only reason I think that people might be standoffish to give this the record, if like, you know, people have a choice, but to give this the record by flocking to the box office yeah. is the fact that they know that in two years, there's another one. Even though it's wrapping up this saga of these first nine films that have spanned 40 years, that's the only thing that's holding me back from that. So, you make a good point. From saying that. You make a good point there, but the same thing has to be said about Avengers. That's right. In got- less than a year, there's like there's two movies every fucking year. No, two that, Marvel that, movies that's every true, year. but at the same time, it was Avengers. It wasn't Marvel. Yeah, but they're all you know what I mean? the same thing. No, no, no I, I get it. I, I yeah, get it. exactly. But you're not going to compare Ant-Man 2 to fucking Avengers Endgame. No, you no, know, like as in people aren't going to look at Avengers Endgame and say, oh, Ant-Man 2's coming out like after that. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I, I look at it at this perspective. I don't think Star Wars Episode Nine: Rise of Skywalker will beat Avengers, I think it may come close, maybe in the top 10 of, like, the highest oh, rated movies, no, highest no, no, grossing no, movies I, of all time. I'm, I'm thinking top four, bro. You, well, so, I, like, yeah. So, I no, think The de- Force Awakens was close. Yes. But I'll, I think, I'll pull it up right now while yeah, you're talking. Yeah. I think the reason that it won't get there is simply because so many people were burned yes. by the most recent one that this movie is, not only is it, it was always planned that there was going to be a third, but yeah. this is going to be placing a hell of a lot of Band-Aids over what happened in the most pre on in the recent film. Yes, that's so right. So people like myself have been burned and although like as much as I I definitely will see this because yeah. I am a Star Wars fan, have been since of I course. was fucking born. Yeah. But I'm nowhere near as hyped for this as I was for The Force Awakens. No, that's right. Yeah, because, because that- I'm the step like Force Awakens I thought, yeah, fair enough the story was fairly cliché yeah. and stock standard. I thought yeah. the film was great. Yeah. But then I expected the 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 sequel to that film to be similar along the lines of the prequel series from mm-hmm. the original and mm-hmm. the prequels that yep. there was going to be at least a good 10 20 year story gap. Yeah. But no. But it felt like it was day after. Yeah. And the story was really condensed as I mentioned earlier. So yeah. where I this looks like it's happening the day after that. Like this yeah. the, the scope of the entire trilogy does, doesn't seem large enough for me. I for my expectation of Star Wars, but you know who hates Star Wars? The most? Who? People who love Star Wars. <laughs> so I'm looking at this guy, well, it's not doesn't what I want to do, and this isn't what I want. And I'm like, I'm part of that. But no, I can admit that I'm just a just a, no, an asshole. No, that's, you know, that, so. that, 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 that's right. But um, uh, yeah, w- uh, while you were on your long-winded speech again, <laughs> uh, I looked up the- um, You're welcome, America. <laughs> <laughs> um, I looked it up, and of course, we've got Avengers Endgame number one, yeah. Avatar number two now, and Titanic number three, and Star Wars The Force Awakens number four. Yeah. So I could see this one- Jumping into that spot. You reckon? If if the hype behind it is real. Okay. Like you said, if people have forgotten about number eight and they know this is the end, they, it's wrapping up, it's it's ending. There is I also- I could see them jumping out. In the trailer as well, there was also basically the return of 
Emperor Palpatine. Yes, I heard that. I heard. Yeah. I, I, well, so Trailer Park Man, save it, save there it. There was nothing to do with it no. in like the previous movies. Yeah. And all of a sudden, that's what I'm talking about. These band aids, you know. Yeah. So if we look at the the highest gross highest grossing grossing films of all time, how the fuck is the Lion King still number seven? I know, fuck right? You, Lion but look King. at the Last Jedi, Star Wars: the Last Jedi. Look how far yeah. down it is, but it's still on the list. So no, that this movie will definitely be at least in the top ten. All right. Just so depends on where Star it's going. Wars: The Last Jedi is still well over a billion, one point three three million. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars: The Force Awakens two. 0.068 okay yeah. obviously that like the, the that one ruined itself but i could see this one easily scraping over two billion to join the top five yeah simple yeah. as that easy yeah. as anyway mm. we'll talk about more about the trailer yes. in friday's trailer park a trailer park coming this friday make sure to download everything on Podbean, spotify apple podcast and youtube uh, big summer blowout <laughs> sorry <laughs> i forgot my cue <laughs> anyway like yeah. when we're talking about like older movies coming back for a re-release this happens yeah. quite a lot apocalypse now originally got a re-release yeah and good luck with that yeah thank you <laughs> Uh, Your phone has a lock. <laughs> and in terms of like anniversaries mm. as well, this year has had mm. a pretty big, pretty big wrap of like anniversaries for films. And mm-hmm. one in particular is your favorite film of all time. My favorite film of all time, which we cannot speak about. Mm. So moving on. No. <laughs> um, yeah, no, this week it came out. Uh, it's Fight Club's 20th anniversary. Happy birthday, David Fincher, Brad Pitt, Edward Norton. My favorite film of all time. Absolutely yep. love it to death. And there was a funny little tidbit that I'd never heard before, which just caught my attention. And- I don't know why, but it's fucking amazing yeah. that this actually happened because I could imagine this happening now and actually ruining a film, a person's career. Yeah. yeah. In the age of information where the internet is everything, everybody's exactly. connected, anybody can say fucking anything on any talk show or no, that's right. Facebook or Instagram. Yeah. Uh, five but, seconds split. But I'm not going to compare Avengers Endgame to Fight Club. Two very different films, two very different uh, dynamics. Yes. But- 20 years ago this week, Rosie O'Donnell, it was the premiere week for Fight Club. And Fight Club, if you don't know, bombed at the box office. It did. Absolutely bombed at the box office. I believe uh, I can't pull the numbers up quick enough to keep talking and I'm about to burp. So, (laughs) 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 thank you. (coughs) Can you find it? I did not. Anyway, um, so. Anyway, we'll just say it's bombed. Fucking hell. Sorry, there's the Fight Club trailer is playing on the TV right now. Yes, so Rosie O'Donnell and her talk show got to see a preview screening yep. invited by David Fincher. Now, she's a pussy, so she doesn't like those um, violent movies and stuff. Yeah. So, she didn't like it. So, she went on her live national talk show with 5 million viewers, premiere week for Fight Club, and gave away the ending. What a cunt. Yes. Abs- I'm sorry. Even if I didn't like Fight Club and I thought it was a trash movie. That's a dog that's move. That's a dog move. It's yeah. premiere week what for David Fincher's film. David Fincher was coming off seven in 1997 yeah. with Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. So, yep. he's a, a big deal at this stage. And this, like, derailed him for a little while. Yeah. That is such a dog move. And now it's 20 years later. If you don't know Tyler Durden and the, the narrator, same person. Yeah. Bam. Like, like you can't say, oh, spoiler alert, because no, if you haven't seen it by tw- now- it's 20 years doing? later, yeah. and I've mentioned multiple times on the podcast, it's my favorite movie. And yeah. if you haven't taken my advice, <laughs> idiot. But <laughs> yeah. no, so I, I just thought that was a funny little tidbit that 20 years ago, she went on national TV, 5 million viewers, and just ruined this movie. Could you imagine if a, a, a news anchor in America- Five million viewers, like fucking Dr. Phil just goes on and he's like, oh, what about that Tony Stark dying at the end of Endgame? Like, before it comes out. You know, it's He funny- would get murdered. Yeah, it's funny you say that because there was a few memes and things out there saying this, but it was purely because people were trolling going like, this is- They're assuming this is going to happen. I mean, fair enough, it did. Yeah. You know, but- Yeah. Everybody turned around and went, oh, well- I mean, yeah, I get it. If he does, yeah, I get it. But at the same time, I'm going to take this with a grain of salt because yeah. it is just a troll. I mean- No, that's right. You know, back then though, yeah. back when the internet wasn't anywhere near where it is today, mm. you know, people could say anything and that- Fair enough, a talk show like this, I'm, I would, I don't know whether everybody was completely sucked in and believed everything they saw on television at that time like yeah. they do now. Um, you know, but plenty of people would have been like, well, fuck, I was looking forward to this. No, that's right. And, and not only that, like, as in it may it may sound silly. And, and even David Fincher has said this didn't ruin the movie. Like, this wasn't- it, it wasn't her fault. No. Even though Brad Pitt on the audio commentary the year after when it was released on DVD said that was the most disrespectful thing I've yeah. ever seen, which is just amazing because, yeah, fucking A, Brad Absolutely Pitt. Absolutely Tell is. her she's a bitch. Yeah. But, um, no, that's right. Like, back then, I I think people were a lot more- um, I'm not going to say sensitive, but they weren't uh, accustomed to trolls. 
No, so that's something right. like that, it would have been like, "Ooh, Rosie O'Donnell said that it's trash." You know, oh my god, oh, better we, listen to her. Oh, yeah. We can't, we can't go and see that now. Sorry, David Fincher, and Brad Pitt, you hunk of spunk. Yeah, so Sorry, whether that yeah. was like the the result of the movie bombing, but, most likely not. No, that's but right. It would have had some sort of, some sort of impact oh, to the point where Brad Pitt said it on the commentary. Exactly, that's a pretty big fucking no, impact. That, that's, that's right, exactly. You know. And 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 uh, Brad Pitt, um, Edward Norton, Helena Bottom Carter, David Fincher, they yeah. they all love the movie. Yeah, like so they're proud of what they did. And at the time, it was a very big flop. But now. It is, I think it, it's one of those it, underdog it broke, movies. It, it broke records with DVD sales and that. That's where it became. It got its money back. And yeah. that's where David Fincher got some reputation back because it got that cult status. Yeah. And that's why I love it. And if you, the listener, the TCT pack can do me any favours this week. If you haven't seen Fight Club, please watch it this week on the 20th anniversary. Yeah. It is a fantastic fucking film. You haven't seen it, have you? Yes, I have. Oh, Absolutely. Have? Wonderful. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I like so- Barb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, I have seen Fight Club several occasions. Yes. So I His definitely- name was Robert Paulson. <laughs> yeah. No, I, um, I absolutely- A house full of condiments and no food. Sorry. I just- Yeah, I love that movie to bits. I just so. like the fact mm. that, like, you know, he worked in the cinema. Yes, exactly. You know, and he right. played- He was yeah. trolling you know, yeah. the and audience. And Tyler Jordan you know? slips the pictures of the- Speaking of big dicks in the <laughs> middle of the children's films and that. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. No, what a great no, fucking it, movie. It, and so definitely good. watch it if you haven't. It's so yeah. good. And even with the spoiler, you pe- like, if I tell you right now, Tyler Durden and the narrator are the same person, you watch it and you watch those things link up and it's great. And even the reveal will still get you. Yeah. Mm. Do you reckon that was Brad Pitt's, like, sexiest moment? The standing there with the blood and the cigarette? Like, yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Like, that, that one particular picture that everybody's seen? Uh, I don't know about that, but, like- the Sexiest spe- moment? Which which moment are you referring to? I'm, because th- I'm thinking more- I find of, him sexy all the time. Like, listen, he's a handsome dude, and we get that. But, <laughs> like, in this movie, he was particularly rugged and oh, shredded no, at the time. No, exactly. He was- Yeah. You oh. know, there was moments during the fights themselves when they were in the bunker where he was shirtless yeah. and he, he was just- oh. Not only that, Jared Leto as well. He's in it as well. Is he? Yeah. Fuck he plays hell. the blonde guy. I can't remember what his name. I think he's like uh, credited as Babyface or something like that. Right. But yeah, no, he plays yeah. the blonde guy. Yeah, this was one of Jared Leto's first like major roles, like as in, in yeah. the big picture that yeah, right. bombed. Well, speaking yeah. of big dicks, have you heard about Jared Leto being a huge dick lately? Yes, I did see. We don't have this in the notes, but it's I worth didn't really mentioning. Wanna, I didn't really want to bring it up. No, because I, I, we feel like, I feel like everybody's already spoken about it, but at the same time, he's- a dick. Like, like, even if not all of it's true, I still b- would believe that somebody like him would do this. And I get why he's doing the things that he's doing. So, yeah. essentially, if you haven't heard, if you've been living under a massive rock, Jared Leto, Leto, whatever you say, he- Let go. Let go. Let go of the Joker, man. Like, apparently he- tra- <laughs> This <there> guy. Was- <laughs> I can't reach the keyboard. <laughs> That's the wrong one. I want to bang it. I know, but Sorry. I was- Yeah, bad joke. Yeah. My apologies. Anyway, there was allegedly tried to stop the Joker movie from happening. And when it did, he was very upset the fact that Warner Brothers went ahead with the Joker film. Yeah. Despite the fact that he was Joker at the time. Uh, but- I think- He was never- guy, Yeah, sorry. I, well, this is my opinion on this particular yes. thing. Whether he's upset or not, yeah, I get it. I would be too. Of course. The thing is, that Joker, that version of the Joker wasn't good. Exactly. And it was universally panned. The problem here, though, m- this is my thoughts on it. I think mm. Jared Leto, Leto, being an Oscar-winning actor from Dallas Buyers Club, Fight Club, a whole bunch of fucking movies, he has acting chops. Yes, if he, 100%. If We're not he, denying that. If he was cast as yeah. this particular version of Joker that was completely separate from Suicide Squad and yeah. the wider DC universe, yeah. if he was to play a standalone Joker film directed mm. by Todd Phillips, everything the same- Yeah. I think he could have pulled it off with the right story and the right director and the right team yes. behind him. Okay. The reason that I think the other Joker failed is just they just had the wrong idea about it. Absolutely. And I I, I don't discredit what you're saying. Mm. He has acting chops. There's a reason he has an Oscar. If you haven't seen Dallas Buyers Club, he and Matthew McConaughey are flawless in it. Mm. They are amazing. That's a great film. Brought me to tears. But- I could see him in a standalone Joker film pulling it off. I yeah. could. Not but- as that version of the Joker, though. No, as a completely no, 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 separate no, 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 one. no, no, no. Yeah. Could you see him doing what um, Joaquin Phoenix did no. for Arthur Fleck? No, because he transformed his body. Exactly. The la- <laughs> Jared Suicide, Le- Jared Suicide Leto- Squad yeah. Joker was like, he was fit. Yeah, he was a fit dude. Yeah, he could go toe to toe with Batman. He would be the kind of guy who would punch on with Ben Affleck. That's right. Jared Leto knew that for that role, and that's why he like you know 
got himself a bit. Yeah, yeah because this was the Marvel Joker. Now, the yeah. big overblown. It, no, exactly. Yeah. And I think the one thing, and I don't think Jared Leto's, um, Le- Leto's Lego's um, ego could get past, yep. is the fact that this isn't related to the DC universe. No, it's not. Joaqu- As we've discussed, and I hate beating a dead horse, but yep. Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is a separate entity. It's a film. It's a new taxi driver. It's- it's by itself. It, it it's got, completely it, standalone. Like, like That's you correct. mentioned a couple of weeks ago, it got slapped with the Joker and the DC world to be marketable. That's, yes. that's that's all it comes down to. So if his ego could let that go and understand that this is a one-off, yeah. this is the one-off film, a sidebar that isn't attached to anything, he should be more mad at the fact that there's the new Suicide Squad movie coming out without him. Well, that's the thing. That's what he that, should be mad about, that, not fucking this. That story of, like, the Suicide Squad and all that, fair enough, that's kind of a reboot, even though they still have the same cast. Yeah. yeah. You know, fair enough, that's going its own way, and Joker went its own way, yes. and DC's kind of a bit all over the place at mm-hmm. the moment for all the right reasons, I think. Yeah, yeah. He has essentially been outed as no longer any version of Joker. Yeah. He will no longer be playing any version of the Joker. Yeah. And I don't think it's his fault- no. I, like, I mean, fair enough, his antics and the stories that came out of his antics when he was cast as the Joker to yeah. prepare for it were real dumb. He no, was just a fucking asshole. I, I don't think he was an asshole. I think he was trying way too fucking hard. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. He yeah. became an asshole by be- but, trying way too fucking hard. He, he, was, exactly. he was sending people like used condoms dead and dead rats. rats and yeah, things. exactly. Like, no, like that's to, dumb. Compared to Heath Lodger, le- sorry, Ledger locking himself in a hotel room and studying the character for a week writing in a diary. Yeah. Like, like no, no, Jared Leto just was like, I've got to be weird too. He's some dead rats and shit. No. You f- fuck off. You're a yeah, dude. Okay? That's right. At the end of the day, you got an Oscar to go home to. Like fuck off. You're a crazy. Like, yeah. I think with the right director and the right story, he could pull off a good Joker. But yes. his time has passed. No, that's right. That that was an experiment. It failed. Move the fuck on. Simple as that. Whereas yeah. Joaquin Phoenix, um, did you hear what his one rule on set was? What was that? He said to Todd Phillips, "Whatever you do, you cast anybody you want. Yep. Just don't let them be an asshole." <laughs> That's literally- Joaquin's like the best dude. No, like, th- that's that's, li- that's yeah. literally all he said. Like, as in the guy who played his boss in yep. the office, he was doing an interview and he said he got the job from Todd Phillips and that. And Todd Phillips said, look, I love what you- I, I want you for this role. Yeah. But are you an asshole? Like, literally, and asked him in the interview for getting the job. Yeah. And he's like, no, I'm good. Like, you can ask the other directors I've worked with and that. And he got the job and he, he guesses he wasn't an asshole because he got the job. But yeah. that's the only thing Joaquin Phoenix said to Todd Phillips- don't hire any assholes. Yeah. Simple as that. And it and, fucking worked in their favour. And apparently the set was amazing. And uh, yes, Joaquin was in his own and stuff like that. But he never, he never intimidated or affected anybody. Exactly. Yeah. Fair enough. He played a psycho killer clown, whatever, no, whatever you want right. to say. But like- you heard that there was nothing but good vibes on set. Exactly. You know, that goes so, to show that they're focused. No, that, that's the same with Heath Ledger as well. He was in yeah. that dark zone and we know that, like, it contributed to some of his issues that he had later on. Yeah. But- but but there was no stories on set of him being a fucking prick or something or sending people yeah, crazy shit. Like, right. in there's Jared Leto, you're an incredibly talented actor, and I know you're listening, but just give it up, okay? Yeah, go you back tried, to doing you tried. what you do I can see what act. you were, I can see what you were trying to do, but just take those serious roles, man. I'll get back with 30 Seconds to Mars and go on a tour. I'll come see you. You got yeah, some good songs. Whatever works, man. Yeah. But there is that famous photo. I know we've harped on about this for way too long. Skateboard? But we'll the skateboard. Yeah. There's I a great it. photo yeah. of Heath Ledger yeah. in the Joker costume, skateboarding and I- doing an ollie over Christian Bale's Batman lying on the ground. Exactly. That brilliant. is a, a brilliant photo. And that came out years ago. Yeah. And, that's- and that's it's, it's speaking of like being a, a, an asshole on set, that's- one thing that essentially damaged Terminator Salvation is the ah. Batman actor himself, Christian Bale. He yes. went full fucking psycho on a person during the Termination and Terminator uh, now, filming. Now, the film itself has its own merit of problems, but yeah. that is the thing that you hear about when you go, well, what's wrong with Terminator? Well, the lead actor was a cunt. See, now I've had this discussion many times, <laughs> literally only like two weeks ago with Tom at work. Hey, Tom. Mm-hmm. Um, the, fact Tom. That, the fact that they literally- the Apex actors. guy? Is that Apex guy? Uh, used to be. He oh, gave really? up. Yes. Yes. I turned him. Apex. Because oh. <laughs> it's a piece of poop. <laughs> Been calling it since day one. Anyway, um, I've had this discussion many a times with people about the fact that, okay, yes, what Christian Bale did sounded unprofessional and bad. Yeah. You've got to remember, these guys are on set 16 hours a day. Like, everyone pictures actors as being spoiled little kids and blah, blah, blah. And yes, they get pampered. But it's because- They work fucking hard. When they're working for three, four, five, six months- they're on set 16 hours a day. And not they only have that, to be- Chris, Christian Bale's the kind of guy to diet 
really, really hard the for machinist. Rolls up. He's probably got no carbs in him. He's probably pissed. No, that's exactly that. That's a hundred percent correct. And if he's being the Batman, he's got to stay Jack. So he's on the opposite, eating a lot and working yeah. out constantly. And that sixteen hours a day, you've got four hours of doing one scene. Like six lines, and you've got to do it yeah. over and over and over. And this was obviously a point where a particular scene went too long. Somebody walked in the shot, or like kicked the light, or I can't remember what it was. On from Salvation. what I re- from what I th- think I remember mm. is that they were filming a scene. I don't yeah. think the guy got in the way of anything. He was simply walking. He was somewhere walking in the background, and it was yeah. distracting. Exactly. And I get that. No. Uh- I, I understand yeah. the reaction and how, like, you know, dude, calm the fuck down. It's a workplace, technically. And yes, you are the star. Yeah. But at the same time, he's probably on his 18th take of this one fucking line. He's in the character's head. He's yeah. going over it over and over. It's probably 10 p.m. at night. He's been up since six doing this same fucking scene. Yeah. Give actors a break when it comes to that. Okay. And the other I thing is, too. I wouldn't have the patience to do that. Yeah. I mean, and- I know I'm handsome enough, but <laughs> the talent, oh, we'll see. You we, know, Hollywood. We, we give shit to, to actors. Mm, blue steel. We, yeah. give, we give shit to actors about blowing their gasket on set. But people like Taylor, for example, and yeah. a lot of the population of Earth, yeah. they watch Gordon Ramsay's Hell, Hell's Kitchen. Yes. And- I love Fair enough. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure like half of that anger is to do with the TV show. And of it course has to it be is. Hard. Of course it but, is. But like I've heard stories from actual chefs. Shout out to Burns. You know, like and, yeah. other, and other chefs, for example, who who do say, yes, yeah, sometimes the kitchen, working in a kitchen can be like that. People are screaming and yelling. You're working That's overtime. Right. Like, so if, for someone to go, well, he shouldn't have done that. It's like, well, there's a lot of environments of, of workplaces right. where that shouldn't happen. And it does. That's right. Exactly. So you listen cannot- up, Hollywood. There's a lot of things you shouldn't do, but you do. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Settle the fuck down. Sit down and know your fucking role. That's right. Anyway. Um, yeah, I think we need to move on. From yeah, we're getting a move on. Uh, Jessica Biel is starring in a movie produced by Facebook. Yes, Facebook Watch apparently is producing TV series now. I watched the short trailer to this. It actually yeah. looks quite fascinating. It's okay. about a um, small town called Limetown. Yep. And uh, their 326 citizens one day just disappear. Now, that's an interesting and she's concept. In, and she's I investigating w- it, trying to figure out what the fuck happened. Is and- she a copper or just like a regular... There was, it was literally a 15 second trailer, like one oh, of the ads on okay. Facebook kind of thing. But yeah, produced by Facebook Watch. That's my most intriguing thing. Yeah. Everybody's in on the fucking streaming game, uh, streaming uh, game now and fuck. Yeah. Good for them. Well, speaking of streaming. Oh, speaking of streaming. Twitch. Yes. Has partnered. Well, they're owned by Amazon. Yes. Indeed. Which is the, the key essence to this story. Of course. But the big news is, mm. is that they've announced they're going to be trialling what they call watch parties. Yes. Now, this one I added into the notes because it had to do with Twitch and it was them trialling something. So, I was intrigued from the start. Th- they're going to be trialling watch parties where a streamer can be watching a movie from Amazon. An it's Amazon off Prime the Amazon movie, str- yes. streaming service, which we are both members of. Or TV show. Or TV show, of course. They've got many an option on Amazon Prime. Mm. Yeah, only $60 a year, people. <laughs> Get on it. Anyway. Or $7 a month. Like, either way, whatever suits no, your budget. Uh, yeah, yeah. Either way, it's cheap as shit. Um, but, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so they're going to be having streamers watching something from Amazon. Like, actually sitting there. Like, right now, what we're doing. There's a TV there and we're watching it. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Oh, man, that Jim Carrey. Like, yeah. And that's and they're going to be, like, turning back and forth, I assume, between what they're watching. And you can watch the movie with the person. Yeah. So, you can essentially watch a certain movie with your stra- favorite streamer yeah. and everybody else who's watching that stream as well. As if you're- I think the essence is to try and bring everybody together to watch a film. Yeah. And I, I, I like that concept. Mm. But mm. I'm old school. Yeah. I don't want to be watching a movie and have somebody else <laughs> talking over the top of that fucking movie. 100 fucking percent. You yeah. and I go to the movies each week. And the best part about that is we sit there in silence and enjoy the fucking film. Yeah, because like that, nobody that. else is ever in the cinema. And if they are, they're that, like us. They want to see a fucking movie. Exactly. You know? And so. that's the experience that we like. So as much as this uh, intrigues me, and I may look at, not watch an entire film, but I yeah. may look at this if it does take off. I, I'm not going to sit there and watch somebody watching a movie. I'm sorry, no. it's as simple as that because that person's going to be reacting, probably checking chat, not even fully invested in the story. Or this may introduce a new level of 
film reviewers, you know, like yeah. YouTube, well, for example, my where there's a million movie yes. reviewers, aka <gasps> but, shock and awe. Oh, oh, now there's going to be a new yeah. version of that where you can watch a movie with your favorite film critics yeah. or movie reviewers, and you can talk live. And I mm. think that's an interesting concept. It is. But I just had a thought where I think I probably won't personally partake in this, but oh. at the same time, streaming uh, once upon a time. Uh, oh. Yeah. You didn't know. Okay, I'll uh, ask you about what you yeah. were thinking in a second. Uh, yeah. But what I'm, what I'm getting mm. at is that streaming a video game once upon a time, I thought yeah. that was ludicrous. Exactly. And now it's the most popular thing on the planet. It's bigger than the Olympics. Six figures a month these people make. Like, Some, it's, yeah. it's crazy. So mm. little old me is like, that's dumb. And, yeah. But the rest of the world's like, that's cool. Yeah. So, you know, I should really get on board. No. So I'm going to be watching this like a hawk. Well, and- Look out for TCTP. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. You, you knew where I was going there. <laughs> I, think, I think we should jump on as this. As much as we said we don't want to watch, maybe you do the TCT pack. I, uh, mean, yeah. I mean, I would be happy to sit down with you. For example, we've still got to watch Doom Annihilation. Yes, we do. And we're going to and, and like sit down. And watch it and just have a camera on us, man. And we can just- they, And the TCT pack can check us out while we just- It's like Gogglebox, except it's we like- won't be on it. Not on Gogglebox anyway, but we'll no. be on Twitch and we will We be- should apply for Gogglebox. Should we, though? I don't know. I think we should. Yeah, I, why not? Yeah. See, I'm here's- supposed to be on a game show this year and I still haven't got the fucking email. <laughs> hey, Channel 10, pull your finger out and let me and Grant Denya be fucking best friends. Seriously, I'm supposed to be on TV. I really yeah. pissed. That, we like, talked about this in like episode two. Yeah, I know. I got, a, I got an email from them in May saying that um, like it'll be airing later in the year. Bitch, it's later in the year and I'm freaking out. <laughs> Simple yeah. as that. So, yeah. I don't know. I've already got paid my money though. We'll, we'll- oh, that's fine then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got but that like six you- months ago. It's gone. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you didn't want to disclose to me what you won. So I still won't ask. Exactly. <laughs> um, I will one day. If I get an email saying, sorry, it's not airing, I'll just fucking come on here and ruin everything. Yeah, fair enough. But I had better Ooh, air. I, I look like a pop culture genius, bro. Yeah. Dead set. Or on the and, show. Yeah. Oh, big right. time. And cool. here wanna... weekly, twice weekly. Twice on weekly. TCTP, available on Bobby, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. YouTube. Big, big summer, summer blowout. Anyway, we got to go have a fucking move on because we tried to cut these episodes a little bit shorter. Yeah, well, there's not much in the gaming realm this week. I mean, we can cut out the Apex Legends, Borderlands 3 Halloween event news. Even it's Hitman something. 2 has like a, a yeah. free update. Call of Duty Mobile has some kind of Halloween oh, dude, theme I haven't happening. been back on, man. As good as it was, I just haven't had time. No, that's fair enough. That's mm. like me with almost everything I do <laughs> yeah, in life. That's right. You know, yeah. so like, I mean, there was a bit of a leak about the latest mm. Batman game, but I haven't yes. played. I think I've played like maybe 20 minutes of the first one and I just no, was like, that's okay, right. I get but, it. Yeah, Move no, that, that, that that's right. But a prominent leaker who gets into and hacks all these informations and data mines and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Batman Arkham Legacy is going to be the next Batman game. So look forward to that one coming out soon. Yeah, absolutely. But if you're mm. into Halloween themed stuff, which yeah. typical old school me, I'm wearing a college shirt, <laughs> you know, from work. Yeah. And, you know, I haven't had a haircut in like three weeks, so I'm definitely old school. Yeah, and I've I- got blonde hair and- Ugh. Yeah, so you may so part- old you may participate you may participate in the <gasps> Halloween things, but I probably I'll be like, yeah, whatever. Nah, man, seriously, no. I, I'm all about Fortnite Chapter Two, and I don't want to get too into it now. But dude, it feels like a whole brand new game. Yeah, it feels amazing. Your boy is actually pretty fucking good now. Are you streaming again? Though? No, because I had issues when I did uh, post the stream. It yep. didn't load as an, it, it. It didn't come up live. It right. I thought it was because it came up like I was recording on the PlayStation. Yep. But it didn't actually come up on my Twitch stream. Right. I need to delete that and get a new one. I just need to Your be twitch.tv slash Mitchell TCTP. Like, right. I got to change the name. Yeah, okay. I just- Not change the name, just start again. Right. Start again from scratch. But anyway, yeah, Fortnite Chapter 2 right now. If you've played Fortnite and weaned off it or just, you know, couldn't be bothered with it, it feels completely brand new. Yeah. Your boy's got game as well. All I've played so far is 23 solos. Yep. Two fucking wins. Fuck yeah. Two wins, 23, 23 games for 50 kills for a uh, 2.4 KD. So it's a bit more balanced. It's a bit yeah, more so even, Twitch. a bit more TV fair. slash somewhat good TBH. Like, <laughs> I know, yeah, so- uh, uh, Well, that's I, the thing. Yeah, maybe change the name to something a bit more like- Oh, like- Mitchell TCTP. That's what it will be. Okay, look out okay, for that. As long as it's not taken. <laughs> if you follow us but, on Twitter and Instagram yes. and Facebook, you'll see a link uh, shortly in the yes, next couple of weeks absolutely. or so about I've just got to make the account. That's yeah, all. And I will play it again whenever you're online and I'm not yeah, going to bed. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the catch because I work I've weekends. Been, Fuck. I've been replaying mm. Doom 3. Yeah. yeah I, of I, course I, re- 
I, I need to get you into this because it's brand new. I man. recently bought mm. Overwatch. Yeah, and Overwatch is a hell of a lot of fun, but yeah. I still have only played it once because I was yeah. like, ah, oh, Doom. You know, yeah. So no, yeah, of course. I'll be getting into Fortnite no, more Fortnite often. And once we've two. both played it, both streamed it. Yes. Twitch dot. TV forward slash Doomatic93. Exactly. And twitch.tv slash not very good underscore TVH if I don't get around to doing it. But I will. Links are below. Yes, of course. Anyway, um, speaking of big dicks, um, I think that's about the gaming news of the week. I mean, yeah. yeah. There's a hell of a lot more, but nothing interesting. Let's get into. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. It's time for Yas or Pass. Excited Overbody! That's right, it is time for Yas or Pass. Excited or Big Blooded, where we review the films coming to theatres in Australia this week, Thursday, October 24. If you're listening to this to episode day one and you don't mm. have your weekend planned ahead just yet, listen on, because we're mm-hmm. going to tell you what's good and what's not. That's right, and for in- international viewers, uh, just sit back and enjoy our comedic banter while we tell you about the films coming to our theaters <laughs> yeah but, all right let's get straight into it with after the wedding now i yeah. wrote notes this week because we reviewed last week whether or not i did this and i did this week absolutely so after the wedding a drama about an orphanage boss lady working in kolkata who visits a benefactor starring julianne moore michelle williams billy crudup and will chase Alrighty, so getting down to the nitty-gritty of that i haven't watched the trailer i haven't looked up the imdb yep. page Julianne Moore is good. Michelle Williams is also pretty good. Has Heath Ledger's kid all praise, Mich- all praise Michelle Williams. I did not know that, but now I do. Yeah, they were, even more. Yeah, credit. they were together, man. She's she's got Heath Ledger's only spawn with her. Holy she shit! She is a she is a god. Okay? Props to that. Yes. Anyway, 100%. I uh, well, I would be some past. No, that's right. This this one's a blah blah. honestly for me. Okay, Billy Crudup is amazing. Michelle yeah. Williams, Julianne Moore. Well, like we just said, the story doesn't in. Yeah. Draw me in at if all. If you like so. the cast, I'm sure this will be for you. And if you're no, a middle-aged right. woman, maybe, yeah. No, that's right. If there wasn't other things on the table, maybe. Maybe we'll go and see this because we don't mind a good drama. No, but that's right. Yes. This is blah blah yep. simply because there's other things I want to see. Yeah. Simple right. as that. Well, I'm going to give it a blah blah as well. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. go that deep. No, no, that's right. We've got see to, you later. We've got to spread it out, man. We've got to yeah. have the range, you know? Yeah. Well, right. speaking of ranges, the next what? one you've got on the list, I'm mm. going to take control of this Get one. It's called it. Blinded by the Light. <gasps> I can't see. I've never heard that. It's a song I know. Okay. There's a metal band from the 80s called Overkill. And when I read this blinded by the light there's a song that they have called necrotize oh wow and I was like, blinded that- by the light oh that blinded is blinded by the light that is- necrotize <laughs> i was like all right i better actually read the description that is though. such a metal song name I like know, an right? 80s metal song named necrotitis Ab- mm. yeah absolutely yeah. yeah the story of a boy in england raised in an immigrant family who discovers how to l- discovers how to love his life yeah. and him through the power of the music of bruce springsteen Oh. Yeah, exactly. You really... So you hadn't read that before? No. Yeah. Uh, you were you were cruising and then you must have gone ahead. Born like, in, your... in the USA! Ex- <laughs> no. no. Born yeah. in the US! <gasps> oh, f- no. It, yeah. But blighted. I fucking... No. I, I feel like this movie only exists because of the success of Rocketman and... Um, Yesterday. Ooh, get on it. Yeah. yeah. What? Yesterday. That... that- What's that? Uh, that Indian fellow who no, the no, only no, one yeah, who remembers that, the Beatles. That too, but uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it literally only exists because of that. Because why on earth otherwise would they have an immigrant child in England who learns to love himself and his life through the music of the American hero Bruce Springsteen? Yeah. Like, I would that's like, the only I'll- thing that I can, re- like, I-, I can justify as to why they are doing a Bruce Springsteen based music film. If this, if at the end of this description you had, you know, loves him through the power of Sex Pistols, yeah, yeah, yeah. or yes, The Who, yes, or yes. any like Rolling Stones, Rolling Stones, yes. any massive popular English rock band, it- fucking One Direction of all things. No, no, they're not English, are they? Yeah, are they? yeah, they're are Brits. They? All right, they're cool. Anyway, yeah, they're Brits. I go down for a cup of tea with me, oh, One Direction. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I can't think of any One Dire- Run Direction songs to mock. We don't know them. It's fine. Yeah, man. exactly. Yeah. That, that's actually a credit to me. Yeah. 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 Uh, but blighted. Moving on. Mm. I'm going to let you this But I will one. say Vivek um, Karl Ra, he is the main guy. It's, it's his first main role. So good luck to you. Like, good I'm luck. Sure I'm sure your talent. movie will be fine. Exactly. Next one on the list is an animation. Cats. No, not that cats. It's an oh, animation. Oh, well, never something ever. 
You see what da, I got to fucking da, work da, with here, people? Da, 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 Mr. Mustafa Oh, man. Lee. While I love GST, I hate GST. <laughs> anyway, Cats. No, not that Cats, which is coming in December, remember. It is an animation about some fancy cats who live in an apartment and des- decide to explore the outside world one day. I am suspicious that this is a foreign animation that has been dubbed for the Western world. And what makes you think that? Because it's called Cats, which, you know, is clashing in two months with the musical Cats. Yep. And also it's from 2018. And uh, also it's directed by an Asian director. And that's not a blight on them at all. That's just pointing that out. And there's no cast list with any notable names. Okay. So this is going to be a pass. Oh, hard blah blah. Although right. I will say the kids saw the trailer when we went and saw Dora and Ugly Dolls and things of that nature during yep. the school holidays. And it, they laughed. Okay. So, it so it'll looked be like it had some funny bits, but yeah. yeah, at the same time, I'm going to say pass because there's a chance I may take the kids to see this. Just- right. Ooh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> that one was heard because I heard it in my micro- my if- Yeah, so that's a pass. <laughs> this is why I'm- we hate GST and love GST episodes. Exactly. Tune in for Friday where we're going to do this again. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I drink scotch instead yeah. of like- Carbonated beverages. While yeah, I know, man. I, I don't burp on this stuff. I need, I, don't drink water this, I need to water the shit down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, lucky for you, this episode only has five minutes to no, go. What's no, that? That's right. Uh, next, next one on the list is Promised. Do you want to take this one away, man? I'll take this one away. So, yes. a movie called Promised. Mm. All right. Your little description here: the yes. story of an Italian father and his two daughters who were promised to be married to some dudes, and now in the 1970s, they're like, "Nah, fuck that, eh?" <laughs> and they're going to be in some trouble. Uh oh. Starring Tina fucking Arena for some reason. <laughs> Oh, man. If, if only okay. my description was actually a joke. But yeah. this is literally about two daughters who, in 1953, they get promised to these particular young other boys. That's gross. No, that's right. Yeah. Like, you know, in an arranged marriage setting. Now yeah. in the 1970s, where things are hip and grooving oh, and progressive. women's rights and such like that. They can vote now. Literally, it's like they turn 18 and he's like, you're going to get married. And then they're like, nah. Fuck off, cunt. And then he's like, no, nah, but I made promise. And they're like, nah, fuck off, cunt. And he's yeah. like, oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> like, that's literally yeah. the no, concept actually, of this movie. It's funny you say that. Like, I think- Was now, it the accent? Is that what's turning you on now? Yes, the, that's accent, what's, yeah, the yeah. accent. But not yeah. only that concept, now you, now you think about it. Is this a comedy? Uh, I, I, I couldn't tell, but if, I think if, so. The poster looked comedic. Okay. If this is a comedy, I'm going to give this a pass. I won't go to the cinema yeah, to see this, but this sounds but, like an interesting story. Okay. If it's a drama- then I can give it a hard but blighted. No, that's right. Exactly. That kind of concept sounds like something that needs to be weaned onto a comedy. Yeah. If it's a drama, then it's just going to be what we've seen before. It's not going to be anything special. It's not going to make nope. any waves. But if it is a comedy, I'll give it a yas. Yeah. Simply on the fact that, fuck, I mean, if I break my leg and can't go to work for a week, I'm going to, you know, go to the movies a bit. So, fuck, I'll go and see this. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, the, I'm very excited for the next one. I'll yes, let you the take next it away. one I'm going to preemptively say TCTP DTC. Ah, yes. this. Boy, the microphone's going away. Enjoy that, YouTube. You're welcome. Anyway, yes, this is TCTP DTC. Ah, this week. 100%. Yes. Agree? Yes. Yep. I am so keen for this movie. Mm. This next movie has been out in cinemas around the world for quite some time now. Yeah, to a degree. But at the same time, I've seen the trailer splashed only really on Facebook and the socials for a while, but now TV for the last like two weeks. And I, I am geared the fuck up. I don't watch free to air TV of any kind. No, of I don't either. Night, but I've I watch only- ESPN. Oh, da, da, da. No. Fair enough. Da, da, da. The sports center theme. Right, cool. Anyway, I've seen a few reviews from this movie and people are sort of giving it do the YouTube now. So yeah, you can mime all yeah. you want. The podcasters won't care, That's but YouTube fine. will know that. Head on over to YouTube fine. if you want to see what I would just did. Yeah. Hmm. But all right, so the m- next movie is called Ready or Not. Yes, exactly. And mm. reviewers are saying, eh, it's all right. Some of them are going, no, not so good. Some mm. of them are saying it's really good. I've only seen this the trailers to this in yeah. cinemas. No, that I so you're getting the full br- the brunt of the yeah. violence and the swearing. Yes. I really like the concept. Yes. I really like the trailer. Yeah. I really like the cast. Hundred percent. Well, um, yeah, like I said, the clear pick this week for TCTP DTCR. Yep. The story of a bride who marries into a family who try and kill her for the lols, right. or maybe because of some tradition. All the fun and hijinks you would expect from a children's movie, <laughs> starring Samara Weaving, Hugo Weaving's niece, Fuck which is yeah. a lovely touch. So she's an Australian. Good yep. on you, Samara. Adam Brody and Andy McDowell. Yeah. When I say children's movie, it's because it's based around a game of hide and seek. 
But yeah. it's a murderous hide and seek. Ooh, watch That's out. That's correct. But and the, it looks as you fantastic. Said, if you man. haven't seen the trailer for Ready or Not yet, just go give it a quick Google search. Yeah. It is funny. It is fun. That's it right. It looks interesting. It, As we said, it does look somewhat violent. I don't think it's going to be too violent. No, It'll I be think more there'll be the those odd, odd spots of gore. Yeah. I think that'll be about it. But more like for the shock as opposed to like over the top. Yeah, mm. but I'm going to, into this with a completely open mind that the yeah. fact that this is an original story mm-hmm. with uh, a great cast, a yes. as we said, starring Samara Weaving, who I haven't seen in anything. I'm pretty sure this is one of her earliest films, she, I would assume. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, no, she was um, in the Netflix uh, film The Babysitter. Have you seen that? It's no, like I haven't. It's a horror haven't. comedy. Okay. Actually quite good. And I've seen it on the no, that's recommendations. Right. Dude, I, I, I fully oh, recommend dude. viewing okay. that, man. It's like down our alley, that's for sure. And she's banging in it, I will just say. But okay. she's also evil banging. <laughs> mm. okay. Yes. But that movie looks good. This yeah. is going to be an excited from me, and it has been for a while. So Absolutely. let's go see Ready or Not. We will be seeing Ready or Not this week for TCDPDTC. Ah, oh, just in time for our review next week. Yeah. But speaking of reviews, we have one coming up on Friday this week for Absolutely. Zombie Kill. Double tap. Bang, bang. Zombie Kill. That's the title of the film. That is correct. Zomb- <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Zombie Land. My if apologies. you want to know all about the movie Zombie Land and a few <laughs> other things as well, we've got some trailers that we want to talk oh, about boy, as well that have come out there. this week. So mm. make sure to feel free. Why did I keep fucking this bit I up? I know. Yeah. It's always- feel free to subscribe and like across our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Or yeah. you can head on over to Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. YouTube Big, Big Summer, Summer Blowout. Blowout. And you can subscribe there mm. as well and you can get- all of the latest episodes from Two's Company Three is a right. podcast from these right. two wonderful gentlemen here from oh. something something New South Wales. Thank you very much for watching and or listening. That's right. And don't forget, we are Two's Company and you are the podcast. <laughs> what? Oh. what did you do? Oh. Is that what you what John Cena? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't see me. What is he doing? He's on the hand. Does it? Five knuckle shuffle? I don't know. Anyway, I'm the wrestling fan. Yeah, I'm not. I'm clearly not. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, gibberish and such. <laughs>